Kids, before you watch this episode of Nightly News Kids Edition, please let a parent or grown-up know we are going to be talking about what happened in Texas this week because they may want to watch with you and talk about it after. Coming up, what exactly is inflation? You may have heard the adults in your life talking about the rise in prices of just about everything, from groceries to the gas they put in the car. We'll break it down for you. Also, the unofficial start of summer is right around the corner, Memorial Day. But do you know the meaning behind the holiday? We'll answer your questions. Temperatures are on the rise. What's the best way to protect your skin when having fun in the sun? Dr. John is here with the do's and don'ts of sunscreen. And the next installment of our inspiring kids series, Meet the Young Man Going Door to Door, Thanking Community Heroes. This is NBC Nightly News, Kids Edition. Welcome back to Nightly News Kids Edition. I'm Dylan Dreyer, filling in for Lester Holt. I'm here in our studios at Rockefeller Center in New York City. It's so great to be with you guys. We begin with some really sad news, though. This week, something bad happened in a Texas school. And we know this can be really scary and make you feel upset and anxious. So we asked our good friend, Dr. Sue Varma, for some advice on how to make sense of what happened. And kids, you may want to watch with a parent or grown-up in case you have any more questions. Each child will deal with tragedy their own way. And there's so many things that you can do, but three quick tips. When you're feeling anxious, the first thing I want you to do is name it. Where in your body are you feeling it? Is it in your head? Is it on your chest? Is it in your stomach? Is it in your legs? Then I want you to claim it and say, you know what, this might be related to what's happening in the world, what happened at school, what's happening at home. And then I want you to tame it. And what that means is directing some of this anxious energy into an activity. So quick things that you can do, talk to a parent, a friend, a counselor, get it out, connect with somebody. I want you to get active, get outside. What do you love playing? Get some time in nature, in sunlight, go for a walk, a bike ride, whatever feels safe and healthy to you. I also want you to get creative. It's so important for us to be able to feel as if we're doing something. Does this include maybe writing a card or a letter to somebody that was involved in a stressful event? Could you write a letter to somebody that is in charge that could help change things in the world? Feeling as if we have some control over envir our environment can be so helpful and go such a long way. I just want to tell you about a really simple breathing exercise. And if you can do this, great. If not, I'm going to sim simplify it. So when it comes to breathing exercises, I want you to inhale to the count of four through your nose. And then I want you to exhale through the count of four through your mouth. Some people find this is really helpful if they close their eyes, maybe if they lie down, put a pillow underneath them. Some people love to put a book or a pillow or a teddy bear um, on their stomach to see their stomach rise. Whatever works for you, but don't forget to take a minute to breathe today. Don't hesitate to ask your parents questions and also ask your parents, what can we do about this? Is there something that we can do? Is there a letter we can write? Can we talk to... Um, a local representative. How do we want to create action? How do we want to create change? So don't be afraid to speak up for what you believe is right and to make change in your environment. That will go such a long way. Dr. Varma, thank you so much. Now on to some other news. You might have noticed that for the past several months, we've been talking a lot about inflation. What is it? And why are your parents talking about it so much? That has some of you asking us this. Hi, my name is Sonia and I'm nine from Chicago, Illinois. My question is, since you're talking about inflation so much, what are ways we can prevent inflation from getting worse? Bye, I love Nightly News Kids Edition. To help answer that, we decided to turn to our good friend, Stephanie Rule. First, let's do a quick review on what inflation is. It's basically prices going up on anything. It can be a candy bar or the clothes you're wearing. And as we've all been hearing, Prices have been going up a lot over the last few months. So we need to review why that's happening. And when we do, it might reveal some information on how we can prevent inflation from getting worse. First, supply. Remember the supply chain? It's how something like a bike gets made in one place, like China, and then is shipped to another place, like a store near you. Well, it's still not fixed. That means sometimes there are shortages. But people still want that bike and are willing to pay more to get it. That's pushing prices higher. So one way to prevent more inflation, fix the supply chain and get more items on shelves. That brings us to the next topic, demand. 
All those people who want that bike, even if it costs more, that's demand. And right now, there's a lot of it, even though prices are higher. Inflation is really challenging for a lot of people, but many folks saved during the pandemic, and now they're out spending. If they stopped spending, if demand wasn't so strong, prices might stop rising as fast. So another way to prevent more inflation, reduce demand. A third way, higher interest rates. We talked about this the other day. An interest rate is basically what it costs to borrow money. If your brother or sister wants to borrow money that you saved so they can buy that bike we've been talking about, you can tell them, sure, but you'll have to pay a fee. If the fee you charge is too high, they might say, forget it, I don't need that bike. So if it costs too much to borrow money, people could start to say, hang on a minute, I'm not gonna buy that right now, I can wait. And if more and more people do that, then demand starts to go down. If demand goes down, well then, prices might stop going up so quickly. Memorial Day is almost here. And while many of us celebrate by heading to the beach or going to a parade, we wondered if you knew why we celebrate it. Our friend Courtney Kuby took your questions about our nation's armed forces straight to the Pentagon. Memorial Day weekend. For most of us, it means three days of barbecues, splashing at the pool, and time with family. But Memorial Day is actually about so much more. Hi, I'm Rudinsky Joseph, and I'm in second grade. I want to know what is Memorial Day. Why do we celebrate? Memorial Day is a holiday that honors the men and women who have died serving in the U.S. military. Americans have been remembering fallen service members every spring for more than 150 years. On May 5, 1868, a Union Army soldier named General John Logan called for a National Day of Remembrance for the soldiers who died fighting in the Civil War. He proclaimed that every May 30th, men and women should lay flowers on the graves of fallen troops. That year, General James Garfield, who later became President Garfield, spoke at Arlington National Cemetery, and volunteers decorated the graves of more than 20,000 Civil War soldiers buried there. Why do they call it Memorial Day? Actually, it was originally called Decoration Day because Americans would decorate the graves of soldiers killed during the Civil War. Over time, though, as Americans fought and died in other wars, the day began to commemorate those killed in all conflicts and became known as Memorial Day. For years, it was celebrated every May 30th. Then, in 1968, Congress passed a law establishing it as the last Monday in May. Today, many Americans mark the day by attending parades, visiting cemeteries, and watching fireworks. And the tradition that first began in 1868 at Arlington National Cemetery still continues every year, with flags placed at all 400,000 graves and a ceremony with the President of the United States and senior military leaders from all the services. The U.S. military is made up of six services or branches, the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marine Corps, the Coast Guard, and the newest branch, Space Force. So what should you say to a service member on Memorial Day? Well, let's ask a veteran. Retired Rear Admiral John Kirby served in the Navy for 29 years. Now a civilian, he's still working at the Pentagon as the press secretary. So what should we say to someone in the military or a veteran on Memorial Day? I think it's important to remember that Memorial Day, unlike so many other holidays, isn't really a happy day. It's not a cause for celebration. It's a chance for the country to take a breath and remember all the men and women who have died serving in the military. So I think the most appropriate thing to do when you come across somebody that you know have, has served or is serving now is just simply thank them for that service and to recognize that, that they volunteered to defend this country uh, and that it matters to you, that, it, that it's special to you. To everyone, have a safe Memorial Day weekend and to the service members and veterans out there, thank you for your service. Thanks, Courtney. It's so nice to be reminded why we celebrate Memorial Day. All right, so the days are getting longer and the weather is getting warmer, which means summer is almost here. It's important to protect your skin from the sun's harmful rays while you're outside. But do you know the ins and outs of properly applying sunscreen? Dr. John has you covered. Hi! All questions about staying safe in the sun. We wear hats 
sunglasses, and sunscreen. But how does sunscreen work? That is such a great question. Now, we all need sun to keep us healthy, but too much sun can damage our skin, which is why we wear sunscreen. When the sun shines, it sends two types of ultraviolet, or UV rays, to Earth. UVA rays go deep into your skin and cause it to age and wrinkle. UVB rays are absorbed by the top layer of skin and cause sunburns. The goal is to stop both, and that's where sunscreen comes in. Sunscreen can work in two ways. It can reflect the UV rays away from your skin, or it can absorb the rays before they get into your skin. Most sunscreen does a bit of both. Sunscreen is one of the best ways we can keep our skin healthy and protected from the damaging rays of the sun. Another term you'll see on sunscreen, SPF. It stands for sun protection factor. This number tells you how long the sun's UV rays would take to redden your skin with sunscreen versus without. For example, if it takes five minutes to get a sunburn, if you wear sunscreen with SPF 30, it would take about 150 minutes or two and a half hours to get a sunburn. Sunburns are usually kind of sneaky. Sunburns can be hard to feel at the time that they're happening. That's why applying sunscreen regularly, even when your mom asks, at the pool every two hours is the best way to prevent that damage happening and that pain happening on your skin. Now, if you do get sunburned, take a cold bath, apply aloe vera gel or moisturizer, and do your best not to scratch. But don't be afraid to go outside. It's actually really important. Did you know the sun has benefits that help your body? Sunlight boosts a chemical in the brain called serotonin, which can improve your mood and help you get better sleep. And you also get vitamin D from the sun. That helps keep your bones strong and strengthens your immune system. It's so important for us all to go outside, kids and moms and dads. So please go outside and don't be scared because you have great ways to keep your body healthy from sunscreens and shirts and shades. So grab that sunscreen, a hat and some shades and get ready for a safe and hopefully sunny summer. Thank you, Dr. John. Well, if you live near Cincinnati, Ohio, you may want to take a trip to the zoo. This month, the Cincinnati Zoo is celebrating all creatures great and small with an emphasis on small. It's baby month. Cuteness abounds with a baby gorilla, a tiny kangaroo, even a baby rhino. We just can't get enough of their sweet faces. Finally, our inspiring kids series. Meet Justin Buma, the young man who came up with a way to thank everyday heroes in his community. Lester has his story. Justin Buma was just four years old when the pandemic began. Justin is homeschooled and during the pandemic, he wasn't able to see his friends and he wasn't quite sure why. The only people Justin did see were those folks working in the community. And that's when he came up with an idea. I was four years old when he started this. And I asked, why aren't the community workers being safe? So I said, I want to save them. With the help of his family, Justin started the Blessing Project back in 2020. Thank you so much. Going around thanking folks for helping serve the community. You're the best. Thank you so much. I will help people that they see. So all of these projects make up Heroes and Hearts. And Justin always says that the community workers and you all are our heroes, the community is, and that we have heart. And he has a million hearts for the community workers. And that's why he has hearts in his bags. Thank you. Thank you. And so Justin has thanked so many community workers um, that I would have never thought about who worked during the pandemic. Since his project launched in Las Vegas, the six-year-old also passes out thank you bags. By encouraging people to thank the community. Right there. Justin also wanted to thank teachers like his mom who homeschools him. They were homeschool teachers plus homeschool moms. I think homeschool moms because they weren't being thanked. Oh, Pop and earlier this month for Teacher Appreciation Week, he even hosted a breakfast. My favorite thing to do during the breakfast was 
that they got to eat and I got to eat too. Justin's motto? You are the hero and we have heart. A little kid with a big heart hoping to inspire others. You don't have to be big or strong to do big things. Thank you, Lester, for that awesome story. Well, that's going to do it for this NBC Nightly News Kids Edition. We hope you found this informative, answered some of your questions, and made you smile. Parents, just a reminder, if your child has a question about any topic in the news, email a video to us at nightlynewskids at nbcuni.com. And you can also follow us on Instagram at nightlykids. We will see you next time. Take care, and remember to be kind to one another.